Hey, welcome back. My name is Sushant Sutish and I am your trainer for this AZ500 Azure Security Engineer certification course. In this video, we're going to learn about hybrid identity. Let's have a high level look at the things what we're going to learn on this video. We will start with what is Azure AD Connect and what are the different types of authentication options available. We will go deep into what is password hash synchronization or PHS or pass-through authentication which is PTA. Then we will discuss about federation with Azure AD and what are the options available with Azure AD Connect which include password wipeback and other options as well. And we will finish off this episode with authentication decision tree. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. One of the most important tool or components you need to understand for hybrid identity is Azure AD Connect. So what is an Azure AD Connect? Azure AD Connect will integrate your on-premises directories with Azure Active Directory. This allows you to provide a common identity for your users for Office 365, Azure and SaaS applications integrated with Azure AD. Now let us understand what are the Azure AD Connect features. The first feature which I would like to highlight is called Password Hash Synchronization or PHS. We will go deep into it later, but let me quickly give you a high level view on what is PHS. Password Hash Synchronization is a sign-in method that synchronizes a hash of a user's on-premises AD password with Azure AD. The next feature is PTA which is pass-through authentication. PTA is a sign-in method that allows users to use the same password on-premises and in the cloud, but doesn't require the additional infrastructure of a federated environment. The next feature is federation integration. Federation is an optional part of Azure AD Connect and can be used to configure a hybrid environment. Federation is an optional part of Azure AD Connect and can be used to configure a hybrid environment using an on-premises ADFS infrastructure. It also provides ADFS management capabilities such as a certificate renewal and additional ADFS server deployments. The next feature which I would like to share is all about synchronization. Synchronization is responsible for creating users, groups and other objects as well as making sure identity information for your on-premises users and groups is, is matching the cloud. The synchronization also includes password hashes. And the last feature is about health monitoring. Azure AD Connect Health can provide a robust monitoring and provide a central location in Azure portal to view this activity. Now let's understand what is Azure AD Connect Health. So before that, let me tell you why do you first of all need a Connect Health tool? When you integrate your on-premises directory with Azure AD, your users are more productive because there is a common identity to access both cloud and on-premises resources. However, this integration creates the challenge of ensuring that this environment is healthy so that users can reliably access resources both on-premises and in the cloud from any device. Azure AD Connect Health provides robust monitoring of your on-premises infrastructure and it enables you to maintain a reliable connection to Office 365 and Microsoft Online Services as well. This reliability is achieved by providing monitoring capabilities for your key identity components and Azure AD Connect Health helps you monitor and gain insight into synchronizations that occur between your on-premises ADDS and Azure AD as well. Please note that to make Azure AD Connect work, you need to install an agent on each of your on-premises sync servers. Now let's understand authentication options available. Choosing an Azure AD authentication method is one of the most important first decisions you will make. You can choose cloud authentication, which include Azure AD password hash synchronization and Azure AD pass-through authentication. Or you can also choose federated authentication where Azure AD hands off the authentication process to a separate trusted authentication system. 
such as an on-premises Active Directory Federation services to validate the user's password. So let me give you a couple of scenarios. The first scenario is, do you need on-premises Active Directory integration? If your answer is no, then you would use cloud-only authentication. Now let us understand what is Password Hash Synchronization or PHS. Password Hash Synchronization is a feature used to synchronize user's password from an on-premises Active Directory instance to a cloud-based Azure AD instance. Use this feature to sign into Azure AD services like Office 365, Microsoft Intune, CRM Online, and Azure Active Directory domain services. You sign into these services by using the same password you use to sign into your on-premises Active Directory instance as well. Password hash synchronization help you to improve the productivity of your users and reduce your help desk cost. So how does this work? In the background, the password synchronization components take the user's password hash from on-premises Active Directory, encrypts it, and passes it as a string to Azure. Azure decrypts the encrypted hash and store the password hash as a user attribute in Azure AD. When the user sign into the Azure service, the sign in challenge dialog box generates a hash of the user's password and passes that hash back to Azure. Azure then compares the hash with one in that user account. If the two hashes match, then the two passwords must also match and then the user receives access to the resource. It is important to understand that this is a same sign-in, not a single sign-on. This solution provides a simple alternative to ADFS integration. Now let's understand what is pass-through authentication or PTA. Azure AD pass-through authentication is an alternative to Azure AD password hash synchronization and provides the same benefit of cloud authentication to organizations. PTA allows users to sign in to both on-premises and cloud-based applications using the same user account and passwords. When users sign in using Azure AD, pass-through authentication validates the user's passwords directly against an organization's on-premises Active Directory. So what are some of the features and benefits of pass-through authentication? PTA supports user sign-in into all web browser-based application and into Microsoft Office client applications that use modern authentication. This allows users to work seamlessly with conditional access features such as multi-factor authentication to help secure your users. And PTA is a free feature and you don't need any paid edition of Azure AD to use it. And PTA can be enabled via Azure AD Connect. PTA uses lightweight on-premises agent that listens for and responds to password validation requests. Installing multiple PTA agents provides high availability of sign-in requests. And PTA protects your on-premises accounts attack against brute force password attacks in the cloud. Now let's understand the federation with Azure AD. Federation is a collection of domains that have established trust. The level of trust may vary but typically includes authentication and almost always includes authorization. A typical federation might include a number of organizations that have established trust or shared access to a set of resources. You can federate your on-premises environment with Azure AD and use this federation for authentication and authorization. This sign-in method ensures that all user authentication occurs on-premises. This method allows administrators to implement more rigorous level of access control. Please note that if you decide to use federation with Active Directory Federation Services or it is known as ADFS, you can optionally set up password hash synchronization as backup in case your ADFS infrastructure fails. Now let's understand what is password write back. Password write back is a feature enabled with Azure AD Connect that allows password changes in the cloud to be written back to an existing on-premises directory in real time. So what are the options and features and benefits of password write back? So let's have a look at the options and the features and the benefits of password write back. First of all, 
Password Whiteback allows enforcement of on-premises Active Directory password policies. When a user resets their password, it is checked to ensure it meets your on-premises Active Directory policy before committing it to that directory. This review includes checking the history, complexity, age, password filters, and any other password restrictions that you have defined in your local Active Directory. The second option what Password Whiteback provides is zero-day feedback. Password Whiteback is a synchronization option. Your users are notified immediately if their password did not meet the policy or could not be reset or changed for any reason. Another ability is Password Whiteback support password changes from the Access Panel and Office 365. When federated or password hash synchronization users come to change their expired or non-expired password, these passwords are written back to your local Active Directory environment. The next option which it's provide is Password Whiteback support when an admin resets from the Azure portal. When an admin resets a user password in the Azure portal, if that user is federated or password has synchronized, the password is written back to on-premises. This functionality is currently not supported in the Office admin portal. And finally, password whiteback doesn't require any inbound firewall rules, which means password whiteback uses an Azure Service Bus relay as an underlying communication channel. All communication is outbound over port 443. Please note that to use self-service password reset, you must have already configured Azure AD Connect in your environment. All right, so now let's understand Azure AD external identities. There are a number of flavors of Azure Active Directory that allows you to work with external identities. That is users that are outside of your organization. The first one is Azure AD itself, sometimes known as Azure AD B2E, which is business to enterprise. When writing application for Azure AD, you can target users from a single organization, which is a single tenant, or users from an organization that already has an Azure AD tenant, which is called multi-tenant application. The second flavor is called Azure AD B2B or business to business. This isn't so much a different directory service. It's an extension on top of Azure AD that allows you to work with external identities, mainly for collaboration scenarios using Microsoft applications. For example, Office 365, Microsoft Teams, and Power BI. In Azure AD B2B, you invite external users into your own tenant as guest users that you can then assign permission to for authorization while still allowing them to keep using their existing credentials for authentication inside their organization. And the third flavor is Azure AD B2C. It is known as either business to consumer or customer or even citizen. This is a separate directory service, but still built on top of the global Azure AD infrastructure, which enable you to customize and control how customers sign in which enables you to customize and control how customers sign up, sign in, and manage their profiles when using your applications. To choose the appropriate Azure AD flavors for your project, there are a number of decisions factors that come into play. I will help you understand what are some of the questions you can think of, and you can use this decision tree to come to a conclusion which one is the right approach. The first question you should ask yourself is, should any user from any and all existing Azure AD tenant be available to sign in? Or do you prefer to view the users in your own Azure AD tenant as guest? Or do you need extensive support for branding and customization? Or other question you could ask is, is creating just-in-time unmanaged Azure AD tenant acceptable? So this decision tree is intended as a starting point to understand your options, but there can be others or even combination of different options as well. All right, so that concludes our episode on hybrid identity and that finishes our first module as well. In the next video, we're gonna have a quick knowledge check to validate our knowledge on what we have learned on the previous videos. So I will see you on the next one.
Till then, take care.